Hello, welcome. I'm Noreen Burke from The Crafty Organizer. If you're returning, thank you. If you're new, welcome. On this channel, I love bringing you ways to get organized, do some decluttering, DIYs, upcycles, and the occasional crafty project. And that's what we're getting to do today. I had a viewer who requested that I figure out a way to dupe a topiary, and that's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. Here was the suggestion from a viewer. I think this is super cute. It could be up year round, but it's definitely in line for Valentine's Day. So here's what we're going to need to recreate this. You're going to need some of the flat moss sheets from the Dollar Tree, a couple of the little tiny mini pots, some skewers or dowels, some loose moss, and then some supplies you probably already have. I'm going to show you how to make these templates a marker, some cutting things, some adhesive, I used a glue gun, some stain or paint is optional, and then I used foam core, but you can use cardboard. So let's begin. I created the template on my computer because I wanted them to be an exact size and a certain style of font that matched as closely as possible. I went ahead and played with the layout on here until it fit on one sheet and then printed it out. I did two sheets because of the thickness of my foam core, I'm actually gonna end up cutting these out twice. So I found a configuration that would take the least amount of my foam core, and then I just cut out a square so I wasn't dealing with the entire large sheet. Once I had that done, I cut them into halves so I would have two small sections. Again, this was just to make it easier for me to do the cutout. Then I got my little X-Acto blade and I just cut out all the letters. This was probably the most time consuming part. I recommend doing very block letters. It will be easier, but I chose a fancier font so that it matched the original idea. Once you get this done, if you have a thicker foam and you're okay with that thickness, then you're done. I did want them thicker, so once again, it matched the inspiration. So I cut them out twice. And by the way, this can say whatever you want. You can make it say your family name, your business name. You could do certain types of shapes. This is really a fun project because you can really customize it to match something that speaks to you and your home style. This step is optional, but again, I'm trying to match the inspiration. So I took some brown paint and just stained the sticks and set those aside to dry. Here's a silly tip I've been doing. I've been using the liners, the smallest ones from the dollar store for my paint. They wash out so easily and that way I'm not wasting paper plates. But I just put a simple coat of paint on here. I used acrylic. You could obviously spray paint them. You can leave them the natural color. Or if you find some pretty little glazed ceramic pots, you could do that. I set all of this aside so that it was drying and it would be ready once I got to that step. Now it's time to start assembling and covering the letters. So you can see they're a good thickness once you double them up. They're about three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna set those aside and get out my flat sheet of moss. Now here is a covered letter so you see what we're ultimately going to do, but here's how I did it. I just laid them flat on the moss sheets and cut out the shape. And then I cut out skinny strips to wrap around the edges. This really was an actual easy project to do. I used uh, the glue sticks and the dowels to press against because this is moss that's been attached to a burlap. So let me show you broken down. I take my marker and I draw out the shape just so it's a little bit easier. And then I take my cutter and I cut out the inside. Again, this is just a stiffened burlap so they actually cut very easily. So you can either cut them out with scissors and the cutter on some cases, I would just glue it directly to the shape and then cut around it, but I did reserve cutting it before I attached the letter for those more intricate corners or shapes. For the inside, I repeated the process of just cutting a strip and gluing it to the inside. Let me show you again on the E. I just double down the size put some hot glue gun and attach it directly to the moss. And I was trying to minimize how much I was wasting. So anytime I could find a little piece, I would do so. But here I am just trimming around the V and you can see how easily it cuts. 
If there was a spot that was a little bit more intricate, I would just go in with my blade cutter and go ahead and cut that out. That also helped around the decorative portions of the letters. So here's the V. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. I think this whole project took me maybe an hour. Uh, and that was mostly because I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning, but I got my I got my mojo going pretty quickly. So here I am just cutting out those more intricate parts with the blade, measuring the width of the V, and I'm cutting out a strip. And now I'm just gonna take my glue gun and start it off on one section. And again, this is burlap, so the glue does poke through. So please be careful that you don't burn yourself. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue around the shape of it. And I found the glue gun was the best thing to press it into place. And I could just shape it all the way around the letter. And wherever it would end, if it wasn't a clean spot, I would cut it off and just continue on. If it was long enough to wrap around completely, then I would just add on to the next space. But this was basically a thick type of tape that I was just using to edge all the way around the letters. For the insides, just use something a little bit sharper, but here I am using the glue stick again. If it was in a tighter corner, I would just use the tip of my scissors so that I could really press it into shape. You really want to follow the shape of the letter as much as possible from that initial cutout so that it looks really crisp and clean. Look how cute that is! Now something I did do is I saved all the teeny tiny moss leftovers, not the burlap portion, but every once in a while I would see a bare spot on the moss sheets. And I just used that leftover moss to fill in any little bare spots with a little bit of hot glue and it made it look just beautifully covered and finished. If I did find I got a little overzealous with covering it, I would just use my scissors to trim it down and make it look as flat and topiary-like as possible. I'm gonna do this with the last letter, but I think you get the idea here. Just cover the front and back. Cut around, you can either do this before or after choosing, that's really up to you uh, and how comfortable you are with cutting around things. And then use strips that are the thickness of your letter and just wrap it around the whole outside. I promise this looks harder than it really is. I found this to be a fast and easy project and I am really happy with how cute this turned out. Now it's time to assemble my letters. I took my dowel and just whittled a sharp point at the end. If you're using food skewers, then it already has a sharpened point, but then I'm going to go ahead and press it into my letter. Remember, these are sandwiched together, so there's already a seam running down the lengthways in the middle. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife or blade and press a cross point so that it has a plus sign entry for the skewer or dowel to go into and I just press it in. So now I have all four of my letters on dowels, and now I'm ready to go ahead and put them into the pots. What I did here is I just took a small drop of the hot glue and placed it on the flat end of the dowel, and I just set it into place. This was enough to let it stand up, and once that was dry, I added extra hot glue around it so that it had a nice secure hold. Then if I found it was flopping around, I just rested my scissors there to kind of hold it in place. And once it was dry, I began filling the pots. I chose paper towels. It was something that I had on hand, but you could use foam if you want. You could add in caulking, sand, rocks, Whatever you have on hand, I want these to be lightweight because I will be shipping them out. At this point, these are almost done. I'm just going to fill in the last bits of paper towel as they dry, and I'm going to get out my loose moss to finish off the pots. I'm just going to put a little glue on the top and then push in the moss. Again, be careful just in case you get burned. And I'm going to trim off any extra just so it looks really clean. And I'm gonna repeat that process with all four until they have the glue, whatever is holding in the base to fill up the remaining part and the moss on top. Once you're done doing that to all four pots, you're ready for the final step. Now you can choose any finish here or no finish. 
I wanted to duplicate, so I used the twine to tie a little bow on all four pieces. And here is what it looks like all finished. I spent a little bit more because I wasn't sure how much I would need, but the total cost for these was $7. Please leave me a comment below. Would you do this? If so, what shape or word would you say on your shelf? I think I'm going to go ahead and try and do my Crafty Organizer logo because I think that would look so cute on my shelf. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please take a second to do so. I am trying so hard to earn that silver play button by hitting 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't done so already, please just take a second and click that. And also, if you don't mind, click that like button if you did enjoy this video. I want to say thank you to my patrons who allow me to make the content of these videos, as well as doing the virtual organizing, which I have another one coming out soon. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in just a few days. Bye.